action. Hey friends, Dustin here. You're what? God dang it! Me 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 me. All right, I got it. How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? How now, brown cow? Hey friends, Dustin here. You're watching the Life of Lynn channel. Thank you so much. We are in front of our 2004 Bluebird Transit bus. It is home, and we are working on it. So far, we figured out that the battery is completely dead, but that's not our issue. We have hotwired the ignition, but that is not our issue. Uh, motor is a no crank, no start. 5.9 Cummins in this thing. Let's dig into it today and see what's going on. The battery's shot, but uh, we had the charger on it, so we're able to get a little power. We got that custom key job going. So we got power to everything, full gauge sweep. But when we go to crank, nothing happens. Beeping, clicking, no start, no even attempt to start. So we're hoping we have electrical issues or starter issues and that the motor's not completely seized up. That would be a bad day. We do have a special tool that we've borrowed. That little guy goes right into the back of the motor, goes right into the flywheel, should allow us to crank the engine manually. Uh, at least see if it's locked up or not. If we can't move it manually, then we have some mechanical issues inside the block. And that doesn't look fun to remove out of a bus. Yeah, no. So fingers crossed for us guys that we just have a starter electronic issue and uh, the motor's not locked up. So we're gonna first things first to see if this motor turns by hand. Well, here's the bottom of the bus. Um, it's got a kneeler system, so the airbags are deflated. I can't fit under here. Probably a bad idea. Be all right. You only get crushed once. Oh, hold on, let me see if this might work. Oh, that's the first, I guess the right size. Situation update, uh, the viewing window is here. The place where that special sock goes in is up here. If anybody's ever working on a 5.9 Cummins, well, that uh, is apparently how that works. All right, good news. The tool worked. The block's not locked up. I was very easily able to turn the flywheel and crank the, the, the crank. Come crank the crank. Oh. We got a delivery. Custom delivery. Custom delivery. Got the multimeter here. Uh, it's time to start checking electrical. And uh, wow, I don't think I've ever seen so many wires on a starter. That is impressive. What? Why? Does the whole battery system run off the starter? Huh. Well, I'm really happy about the block not being seized up. I, like I said, I was able to turn her by hand and I could feel the front belts moving. So we should be good there. So down to electrical, possibly starter issues. Um, there's plenty of relays and fusible links and plenty of wiring in this thing. Like, holy smokes, wiring for days. What is, what is this? Who does this? All right, gonna grab the multimeter here. We're gonna dig into it, see where voltage is. All right, update. So far, so good. Wiring's checking out. I got a solid 12.4 volts from the battery and 12.4 volts at the starter. So hopefully that wire's good. I really need to do uh, an ohm test through everything just to double check it, but it seems like we have enough power over here. So I think we're down to a relay or the starter. I'm, I'm betting on the starter, but uh, on the inside, I feel like I was moving the camera around a little bit too much last time. We already took down the overhead storage bins. Those are made out of aluminum, so you might get a couple nickels back on that. That's pretty cool. And uh, yeah, it really opened it up. Lots of room. Right, we got overhead air conditioners, speakers. It's already insulated. I mean, we're gonna add more, but it's a good start. What do you think of the bus, Walden? I like it. I can't wait until it's actually started. <laughs> drive. 
Uh, I think I'm gonna call the auto parts store, see what a starter is gonna run for this. I don't think they're too expensive, maybe 130, 150 bucks, and uh, get one of those ordered. Um, yeah, I think it's, this thing just needs a starter. Uh, might be one of those things, this was broken down. If you saw the first video on the side of the road, um, it was picked up by Colorado State Patrol and ended up being auctioned off. So that's where we purchased it. But since it was broke down on the side of the road, it could have been one of those things where uh, the injection pump failed, which is a common issue for these older 5.9s. They got stuck on the side of the road. The driver sat there and cranked and cranked on it, just trying to get it to start and ruin the starter as well. So we're not out of the woods, if even if it is the starter. Hopefully we can get that figured out, but uh, that's where we're starting on it. So we're gonna go get that ordered. All right, I got the battery disconnected here. And we also found Walden's bedroom for when he stays with us. Hola. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> hey guys, it's been about two weeks since that last clip. Ended up having to order a new starter for it. I uh, could not source one locally. Found a few places that could order it for me, but they wanted about three times what the starter actually costs. So yeah, I wasn't gonna pay $500 for a starter. Turns out this is not the same starter they use in the uh, 5.9. Cummins and the Dodge pickups and stuff from the same generation. It's a little bit different. So I did get it from a specialty bus place and it showed up a few days ago. But a few days ago, it was raining. Actually, there's still a lot of water behind me and uh, it's been wet, really wet spring. So I have uh, had a hard time getting stuff done and getting work done. But anyway, I think it's drying out today and maybe I can jack this bus up and get underneath there and see if we can get this starter in. Hopefully that solves our problems. Although, it's been two weeks since I took all the wires off, so I probably don't remember how to hook it back up. Alright, well, it's not really jacked up. I just took a little bit of pressure off the airbag, so don't freak out too much. There's plenty of room for me to lay down here even when uh, it's fully on the ground. So, what we got here is a mess. I probably should have left all the wires hooked up until I had the starter. Grab the old stow and go toolbox here from Crescent. This has uh, saved my butt a lot of times. I just keep this under the back of the truck now and uh, yeah, it works good. So there's our starter. Lots of wires go to that. Here's some, here's some, oh, there's some big ones back there. What's that one go to? Oh, that's a, that's a real big one. Luckily, uh, looks like I broke the starter, so all these ones are still together. Good. So it's, uh, it's a little tight under the bus, but not too bad. I got some weird 12 point bolts my crescent set those 12 point sockets probably missing the right one but we'll see um if you guys haven't already like the video subscribe to the channel because i got a bunch more content coming out in fact you guys have been so eager about all this junk that i've been picking up and buying i'm going to keep doing it and do even more videos than i have been so if you keep subscribing and liking the videos and shooting comments down below I'm gonna do even more of this and bring you even more content. So I plan on getting some crazy stuff that you guys will probably enjoy here pretty soon. So if you guys haven't done that already, please do it. It helps me out a bunch and it makes me excited to do more videos. Back to the starter. Okay, they are 10 millimeter 12 points, which is why they're not any smaller because this is the smallest 12 point that I got. Put a couple extensions on there. Uh, these two, that one and that one. That's those are gonna be easy to get to. Now there's one up past all the wiring and hoses back there, like 12 feet. So I don't know. That's gonna be a little hard. All right. Well, that massive pile of junk just came on out. Three bolts. If you can get to them, it's not too bad. But this thing weighs a ton. Ta da! This one's nice and has all the pieces on it that it needs. All right, she's in there all bolted up. Got everything all torqued down. Taking off these nuts, getting the wires hooked back up. But first, I'm gonna 
file on these just a little bit. They're not too bad, but the cleaner the better. Interesting thing to note as I'm hooking up my wires here, I'm getting to the positive wires and um, they're leaking. Um, pretty sure wires aren't supposed to leak fluid. Oh wow. What is that? Oh, it smells like varnish. Must be really old diesel. Wondering if they don't, uh, when you don't change the fuel filter, which is above the starter for some reason, up there. If uh, fuel drains down here when you pull the filter out, it gets in this wire loom and then just sits there. That seems bad. And just like that, we have all 12 million wires back on the starter. I just realized that uh, I never bought a giant big rig battery for this. I have no idea what size it is. I already took the old one out and <laughs> recycled it. So uh, we don't have a battery for this. So let's go find one of those and see if we can get this thing uh, cranking over. Well guys, I just realized that uh, I don't really have any batteries just sitting around. They're all GM side posts and uh, old deep cycles out of campers, so those aren't gonna help us too much. The only thing I do have that is a top post that might work is in this. This is my 1980s Turbo Chrysler wagon. I've lovingly dubbed it the Woody Wagon. And uh, it's great, and we're about to steal its battery from it. We'll take this battery and then put the uh, charge pack on there or the uh, battery charger itself and see if we can't get enough amperage to the sucker to get it to turn over. She's a beaut. That's turbocharged. That's what you need in your 1980s Chrysler products. Uh, yeah, those are actually tight. I'm gonna have to get a tool. Well, this is just a bad idea. That battery is entirely too small for this thing. It should be about three times that size. So I'm making up for the battery charger. Yeah, we'll just put it on the 200 amp boost thing and see if we can melt some wires. Bus is looking great. This thing is, I'm really hoping everything runs good. Runs good-ish. Because that is, that's gonna be awesome. That's gonna be a sweet rig. Maybe I can get this Cummins tuned up and running a little hotter than the factory specs and uh you know we can tow a boat build an entire house on the inside Just in case you guys didn't know that is the plan we are gutting this thing and we're building a full conversion inside here so it's basically going to be a home on wheels for the fans and i i just hooked up the battery we didn't have sparks or anything so i think i got the starter hooked up right yeah, so maybe it's the solenoids and the relays for it, but the wiring is all cleaned up. I do need to get an ignition switch still because it's it's still hot wired. Not ideal. I'm getting nervous, guys. I don't even want to crank it over yet. I'm worried. I'm out here by myself. I'm just like, is it going to work or I'm just going to be disappointed again? It's like the Barth all over again. You guys haven't seen the episodes on the Barth Motorhome, go check those out on the channel. They've been getting super popular. All right, if I turn this to 200 amp engine start, is this gonna like catch on fire? It's questionable. It kind of freaks me out a little bit. He's hot. Getting that way. It might be my awesome ignition setup here. Well, I'm gonna go turn the battery charger back down so it don't melt anything. Disappointment. Womp, womp, womp. Yeah, those are getting spicy. Ooh, 
Nice. All right, Cummins friends out there. What am I missing? Is it these relays back here? Or something else must be wrong. <laughs> okay. It's acting different. When I had the last starter in here, I would turn the key on, and when I turned it to start, I'd lose voltage really fast. Like it'd just drop off like I had a huge high amperage load. Um, this time I'm not having that. So what did I forget to hook up? It's acting like the starter's not even on there. So maybe the relay? Hmm. I don't know. I'm gonna dig into it, guys. Hold tight. So I looked at a wiring diagram online, figured out where I gotta put all the wires. Let's see. Beeping's good. Uh, what do the gauges say? Do we have gauge sleep? Well, let's change some other wires around. What's this one do? Do we have gauge sleep? Holy crap. Sorry guys, got a little excited. All right. Let's try that. Oh wow. Oh wow. All right. It's a good start, sort of. I mean, it didn't start, but. All right guys, more problems found, more problems fixed. Electrical stuff. I don't actually mind it. I am not horrible at it. Probably should have lifted this a little bit harder before I ordered a starter. Not 100% sure if we needed one or not. Found the relay that goes to our gauge cluster here. And um, yeah, we got that figured out. We had some wires that needed to be fixed. Fix those wires up behind there. Now the gauge cluster powers up like it's supposed to. And we're getting power to the solenoids for the starter. So I think we're ready to try to start it again and see what happens. All right, Bluebird. We are gonna order a proper ignition cylinder for this, but I wasn't going to do that until I could confirm that it started. Okay, that's what we wanted. We've got the wait to start emblem. Okay, and that turned off. We had the full gauge sweep. Let's go for start. Yeah! Charge voltage, oil pressure looks pretty good, and we're building air pressure. Let's run outside and see how it sounds. Oh, that sounds lovely. Oh, I love the sound of a six cylinder diesel, it just makes all the right noises. We can turn this off. Awesome, this thing. Right there. Looking good. Not smoking super bad, just a little bit. Obviously, this has been sitting a while, so uh, we're going to let it warm up completely. Get that oil hot. Now, guys, as much as I want to just jump in this thing and go for a cruise real quick. We still got brakes in the back that are caged. We got to get back to spring loaded. Drive shaft's still hanging down. We got a lot of work we got to do before we can drive it. But now that it, she's running and appears to be running pretty good, I'm excited. All right, let's fire up the kneeler. We got air pressure. Ready? There we go. Next thing's next. 
does the door work? Door. Look at that. <laughs> well, guys, that's about it for today. I got a lot of work to do. Unfortunately, these brakes are still caged. We've got to fix the brakes in the rear. That shouldn't take us too long. The main issue is I just noticed that uh, the rear drive shaft was taken off. Yes, but they cut one of the U-bolts that goes over the U-joint on the back. So it must have been seized. So we got to get unseized bolts off and new U-joints pressed into this drive shaft. And it's a big drive shaft with big U joints. So I don't think my hammer on the bench is gonna do this one. So we're gonna dive into that next time and go through the rest of this thing, make sure it's mechanically sound. And we're gonna get it on the road. So next time, we're gonna fix those things, get her fired up, get it out on the road, make sure the tranny works, shifts through all the gears. And uh, I should just go stop by and pick up all my friends. I mean, I got room. Just show up to their house and get on the bus. Perfect. All right. Till next time, guys. I appreciate you so much. God bless you. We'll see you next time.